Sue Kutno is our guest today. Welcome, Sue. I understand that you, for the most part, are self-taught, but work closely with bullseye glass in Portland, Oregon, to learn the fusing technique. Yes, that's true, Nancy. And first of all, I want to thank you for inviting me and, and congratulations on your new program. Thank you. And uh, yes, about 30, 35 years ago, fusing was not a very popular, as a matter of fact, nobody knew about fusing uh, glass. We basically worked with stained glass at that time. And I did start out in stained glass and promptly in about four years got lead poisoning and heavy metal poisoning. Oh my gosh. From all the leads in the solder that you use. And um, I found out about fusing, which is no chemicals, no lead, no solder. It's basically layering glass and firing it in the kiln. And the only company was out in Portland, Oregon, and that was Bullseye Glass. And they were actually sort of inventing fusing for the home hobbyist. Hmm. Um, fusing had been around or has been around for thousands of years. Glass blowers fuse different colors onto the base color like a vase. They'll fuse uh, red and blue onto a, a clear piece of glass. And um, fusing just means melting the glass together. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bullseye wanted to figure out how to do it for the home hobbyists that they can just have a little kiln in their garage. Not everybody could have a big Murphy bucket hot oven in their garage. So what you're saying is you need something a little bit more than a Bunsen burner. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. And kilns were very popular with ceramic people. So they figured, okay, how can we do it with, um, with glass? And they figured it out. And Bullseye was the only fusible glass company for 30 years until 2000 when other stained glass companies started to make fusible glass. Oh, that's amazing. You know, I grew up in Elwood, Indiana. And yes. Elwood was the home of St. Clair Glass Company. Okay. Yes. And as I understand, it was one of the few of the last hand-blown glass factories right. in the United States. There was also Pilgrim Glass. Um, I think that was in the Carolinas or in Virginia. They also were, they made large, large hand-blown vases and okay. beautiful, beautiful work. That was before Dale Chihuly, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Dale is um, very, was or and is very much involved in, with Bullseye. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's how he started also. Um, but anyway, um, I started with stained glass, went on to fusing, and have been doing it ever since. In the beginning, there were no fusing kilns. We mm -hmm. had to use ceramic kilns. There were no now, controllers. What's the difference? It has to be the temperature. It's the temperature. Um, ceramics goes to about 2,000 degrees, give or take. Um, fusing glass is about 1,500 degrees. Uh, ceramic kilns are tall kilns with multiple shelves. Mm -hmm. Fusing kilns are, is one shelf, either 9 or 13 inches deep. Okay, so okay. really, if you can control the heat, you can fix a pizza in there. That's right. <laughs> or ba bake a turkey in 15 minutes, maybe. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, also in Indiana, in Kokomo, they have the Opalescent Glass Company. Kokomo Glass. Yes. Kokomo Glass. Yes. Right. Right. They're basically a stained glass company. Beautiful yes. stained glass. Really nice. Um, I had a, uh, a small television show, um, coincidentally. It was called Kaleidoscope. And uh, they were one of the um, interviews that I did for uh -huh. that show. And that was the first opportunity I had to see it actually made. And it was fascinating. It's really wonderful. Um, you can go to uh, St. Pete, and they have a hot they have a hot shop there. And okay, is that at the, not at the pottery? At the um, Morian Art Center. Oh yes. Okay, and they have a hot shop where you can go in, and they uh, have a whole little demo kind of thing hmm. in there, and you can buy things, you know, ba vases and bowls in their hot shop. Okay, yeah. Uh, St. Pete is a very has a very strong artistic colony yes. there. And a lot of glass and Chihuly's uh, museum. Yes, that's right. Is there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I um, went back to college and I went to Eckerd. 
Uh -huh. And I started out, I was just going to get a degree in writing and a minor in art. And once I got in there, I realized I needed a lot more help with my art. Uh -huh. And so I switched. Well, all of a sudden then, instead of my classes being in Sarasota at the branch, they were all in St. Pete. Right. So it was wonderful, wonderful opportunity to meet so many of the artists that right. are there in St. Pete. Right. Um, uh, talking about um, uh, studios connected with colleges, this past summer I worked a lot with, um, actually all summer, with the Ringling School of Art and Design. They were, um, they were invited to the Biennale in Venice, Oh, Italy, yes. not Venice, Florida, Venice, Italy. Yes. And uh, they did actually a brick wall, and they did it in my studio. And I worked with the kids at Ringling uh, for the whole summer, basically, in making these bricks. We made something like 750 bricks for the wall. Wow. Yeah. So where was that installed then? It was installed in, in Venice. Okay. In Italy. Hmm. Definitely, and they took some sand from Siesta Key Beach, and they had this whole thing. You could you could see it on my website. So, did you have a chance to go over and actually see it? No, I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't have time to go, but I've been there before. Did they send you pictures? Yes, they did, <laughs> and I have pictures on my newsletter, and I have pictures on my website, SarasotaSchoolOfGlass.com. Yes. Well, tell me a little bit about your newsletter. Uh, my newsletter goes out every week, and what I do is um, just tell people what, what's happened at the school, what classes we've had, lots and lots of photos, um, and classes that are coming up, and classes in the near future, and just all kinds of information. Now, I believe you told me that um, in your school of glass, you also accept children around four years of age. Correct. Um, two summers in a row, we have had nursery schools come in. Um, from four to, four to six year olds came in this year and um, they were fabulous. We had about 15 children uh, with the teacher and two helpers. If I have children that young and uh, private people come, they, I do insist that their mothers come right. and uh, oversee. But the kids are fabulous. We have pre-cut glass for them. Um, we work with frit, which are little granules of glass. So there's no sharp edges or anything for the children to get uh, uh -huh. cut on. And they absolutely love it. It's oh my wonderful. gosh, what a wonderful idea. And I have when pictures also on my website <laughs> of that if anybody wants to see them. When my grandchildren were um, three and five, mm -hmm. they came to visit. And I took them to one of the recitals uh, at the Oregon Company. And the thing was, I asked him afterwards, I said, can I get lessons for mm -hmm. the five-year-old? Because he was so interested at that time. Well, having worked with children, you realize that they have a short attention span. But for the period of months that they are interested in music or art or whatever, if the parents and teachers would just focus on that during that time period. The children absorb so much that this is... It's wonderful. Um, I am the only school, we'll say, in southwest Florida or the Tampa Bay area that does accept children. I'm the only glass school that does accept children. Um, and it seems that when the children are in a class with, an, with the adults, mm -hmm. and if it's an hour class or a two-hour class, the kids are done in 15 minutes, and then they're helping the adults yes. for the next hour <laughs> because children have no inhibitions. They just come in, you show them what to do, and they do it. And the parents will just sit there, or the other students, the adults, will just sit there and ponder over it and change it a million times and change their design. Children just go for it, and then they walk around and they help out other people. Oh, and they, yes. They're, they're just wonderful. I, I love working with the kids. They have such a wonderful imagination. I was lucky enough to be able to work for a couple of years in the Montessori school. Uh -huh. And, of course, in Montessori, you follow the child. Right. And when you see that they have an interest in something, you just feed them everything right. that you can right. about that subject. And... Oh, I wish we would do that in the public schools. It would be wonderful. Um, 
I usually, if I have children anywhere from six to 12 years old, I usually do not allow the parents to stay there because they will take over and they will tell the child, oh, don't you think a red piece of glass will look beautiful over there? And I have had to throw mothers out, and I do. <laughs> I really ask them to leave. Uh -huh. um, because I once had this little boy in the class, and his mother was basically doing the whole project for him. And I walked over, and I told her twice to leave him alone <laughs> nicely. And um, finally, I told her to leave. And she did leave. She was a little insulted, but I didn't care. And I walked over to the boy, and I said, do you like this project? And he said, no. I s and then I gave him permission to start all over again, and he completely wiped it off and did the most beautiful piece of glass. So, um, you know, adults will put their two cents in, mm -hmm. and they shouldn't. You know, let the kids go off on their own. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, being a mother of four, I find myself today wearing my mother hat when I shouldn't. Uh -huh. Not right. necessarily with my children, right. but with people I work with. Right. And I have to stop doing that because it's just you want to be helpful. Right. And you don't really realize that until the person says, you know, I already know that. I don't need you telling me. Right. <laughs> I find that I'm more helpful when somebody asks a question than going over and making suggestions. Um, if they ask me for suggestions, I'll tell them. Um, but I won't, I won't go, unless they're doing something really wrong, which mm -hmm. is really hard to do in art. Nothing is wrong, whatever you say. So I'm interested, too. Um, you have a book out, Everything yeah. You Wanted to Know About Fusing, but had no one to ask. Correct. Which is now in its third printing and sold worldwide. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, I basically sat down for two years. It took me two years to write this book. Um, in between everything else I do. And it's basically my basic fusing class in a book. Most of the books that you find, um, fusing books, beginner books, they will tell you um, cut a piece of round glass. But they don't realize that people don't know what a cutter is, nor how to use it, nor how to hold it. I start with lots of pictures. This mm -hmm. is a cutter. This is a runner. This is a breaker. This is how you hold it. This is how you use it, even before we start the project in the book. And then when I start a project in the book, most books say, okay, now we'll make a round dish. I say, get your glass, get your mold, get your supplies, cut it, layer it, and I go on to tell them step how to do it. Step. So you can do any project that you want because basically fusing whether you're doing a 6-inch round bowl or a 20-inch square vase, it's all the same process. Mm -hmm. So you just follow the process and make whatever you want, and that's basically how my book has been sold, and that's why it's been so successful. I once had a woman come from Australia to the glass show in Las Vegas holding her book so I could sign it for her. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to tell you, Nancy, that um, I, Sarasota School of Glass is a beginner school, for glass, um, I do have intermediate people and advanced people come in for special classes. Most of my classes are an hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. And um, I take groups, families, lots of families, lots of children, and lots of just people coming in that want to learn glass. And um, my prices start at $5, basically 5 to $40. And they're all technique classes, and we have a lot of fun. And one other thing I'd like to mention, we do, I do give a free class on Wednesday evenings, the second Wednesday of every month. And this is like um, a networking class, a question and answer. Um, it's called Chat and Chew, mm -hmm. and we chat, and we chew pizza. <laughs> I, I buy a pizza. This is my way of giving back to the students. And we have a really, really good time on doing this. Oh, I think that's wonderful. And I'm glad to hear you say that, because I did not know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's our Wacky Wednesday. Hmm. So, if you will, um, can you explain a little bit about how you would go about fusing glass? I mean, I can see where if you've got the little granules and they're all different colors and you melt them, that's going to fuse them. Right. But when you're actually fusing layers, Right. Um, fusing glass is not hard. You just have to have a little bit of an imagination. 
Um, and even beginners that, that have never done any kind of art and they come in and they're panicking because they've never done art and they don't have any artistic talent, I tell them, don't worry, and they make beautiful, beautiful things. Um, you start, let's say we're making a 10 inch plate. We'll take a 10 inch piece of glass, we'll cut it square, let's say it's a square plate, and I will cut it for all my beginning classes. All the base pieces are c already cut for Pre -cut. you. Pre-cut. Um, and then you come in and we're making a design on the plate. Maybe it's a, uh, maybe you want to make just an abstract design. I have all the glass out for you. It's all pre-cut. I have this tool that's called a mosaic cutter and it just chops the glass. You don't even know how, you don't even have to know how to cut glass. Mm. And you place your glass. Uh, let's say we start with a white piece of square glass mm -hmm. and then you want to do colors and let's say your color scheme is blues and greens. So you'll pick all the blues and greens in different shapes and make a design. And then we have stringers that look like spaghetti, little th long thin stringers. And we have noodles that look like fettuccine. And we have confetti, very, very thin glass. And we have uh, pebbles that are little round pebble kind of things. Hmm. All kinds of different design elements. Uh -huh. um, and then, of course, there's frit, which is ground glass. And it comes in powder fine, medium, coarse, and large mosaic chunks. And you can do all kinds of, you can do stenciling with it. Um, all kinds of things. Um, it's really hard to explain on the radio, but if you look on my website, you'll see in the galleries, you'll see all the different types of things that we do. Go ahead and mention the, the website again. SarasotaSchoolOfGlass.com. Yes. That's it. Preceded, of course, with the www. Yes. Yes. Of course. I think we're all getting used to computers now, or at yeah. least I like to think we are. Yeah. Um, I don't know how people lived without them. I know. It's really, uh, it's, it's just so wonderful to look up. I look up a lot of designs, get my ideas. Between the communicating and the researching, yes. I love computers. Yes, definitely. Um. <laughs> Let me ask you, Sue. Yes. Do you have anything special coming up? Yes, they're um, at the end of October at the Newgate School. They are having a Children's International Festival, and I will have a booth there at the Newgate School, and I will have little class for the children there. So stop by and take a look. It's supposed to be fabulous. I think this is their third year doing it. I could be wrong on that. Is that going to fall under plain air? Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to be doing, um, actually... Not next week, but um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be uh, interviewing Karen Smoke from the DeSoto Arts Council, uh -huh. and the subject will be about plein air painting. Oh, yeah. So this is plein air glass. Uh -huh. This is fabulous. Yeah. I, who would even think that's possible? Right. You know? Right. But, yeah, it is. Um, I had won an award from Corning Museum of Glass a number of years ago for my landscape pictures. I would go out and take photographs of different landscape and um, working with different grades of frit would make landscape paintings. Scenes. Scenes, So yes. the picture on your website, you standing next to the portrait, or yes. the picture, it's not a portrait. Right, that's Sunflowers by Van Gogh. I did a whole master series, okay. and um, I did Sunflowers, and it won awards, definitely. Oh, it's um, fabulous. It's, it's amazing. It's painting with glass, actually. Yes. Um, Bullseye came out with Frit in 1989. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, painting, I could paint with glass. And I did it. And then in the 90s, in the mid-90s, I won the award from Corning for that technique. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That is, that's amazing. It's a whole different art form. It's a whole different form. There are so many different things that you can do with glass besides just layering it and putting it in the kiln, which is beautiful. But there's just all kinds of techniques. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to take uh, a class reinforcing my knowledge on MUD, M-U-D. Hmm. It is a whole other kind of 
fusing of glass and it's it's really really fabulous and i can't wait to oh my gosh how did it, it get the name mud i have no idea and i'm going to find out i wonder <laughs> if it's are you familiar with slag uh yeah okay is yeah. it like that yeah it's uh you do it with a pastry uh design thing that you put the pastry right? stuff in yeah. okay i don't know what actually it's called and um you you do flowers and and leaves and trees and it's just so beautiful um and then you work it with a paintbrush and you can paint it and do different colors on it and it and you fire it in the kiln and it dries as hard as glass and oh i can't wait i want to see this <laughs> this is really really wonderful so we are going to be having a glass a uh, glass class in it this year i will be introducing it oh my gosh and it's called mud it's called mud I will find out how, how they came to that name. I love it, though. <laughs> um, are you familiar at all with depression glass? Uh, depression, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because I know there's slag yes. and um, milk. Milk glass. Milk glass. Yeah, that's yes. the white. Um, do you think that, uh, of course, dep depression glass, it's called depression glass because um, these pieces of household pottery and glass and glasses, et cetera, were given away as awards during the Depression. Yes. During the intermission of the movie. Right. And they became quite a collector's item yes, then they later did. on. Yes. I remember, I'm not as old as Depression Glass, but I remember going to the movies with my mother um, on Wednesday nights. And she would come home with a dish oh. because they would give <laughs> dishes away. And she went every Wednesday night until she got a set oh, of yeah. dishes. And I weren't they that. like in soap boxes too? Yeah. See, I didn't do it. My mom had an antique shop. Uh -huh. And so she learned all this, or maybe she knew it. Right. But that's how I know it. Uh -huh. But how fun. Yeah. I want to go to a movie and come home with a right. present. Remember going to the movies and seeing 20 cartoons in the news and a feature, the feature movie, and then another movie, and we were there all day oh. for 25 cents. That's how old I am. <laughs> oh, I can beat that. Oh, okay. My grandfather was a um, manager of a theater in uh -huh. Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I got in for 10 cents. Wow. Wow. wow look at you. Yeah. So that's going back a little bit. Yeah. Shoot, that's in the last millennium. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to go Let's still there. go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got a new project coming up. You've got a new uh, concept that you're going to master. Right. Um, and right now, we are doing preseason holiday classes. Um, oh. Yes, my newsletter, which I should have had out yesterday or today, will be out tomorrow tomorrow morning or tonight hopefully okay let's tell our listeners how they can get a hold of one of your newsletters okay you can go to my website uh sarasota school of glass.com and up in the navigation on the right hand side you will see it says newsletter and you will be able to just click on that and put in your information and you will get on my contact list which is secure and i do not give names to anybody and i have just about 4,000 people on my Sarasota School of Glass contact list. Wow. We started in 2000. So oh. I've been here for 13 years in Sarasota. We've just <laughs> okay. about come to the end yeah, anyway. Right. <laughs> um, no. Well, Sue, this has been so exciting. Um, I want to thank you for coming and speaking on Artist Kaleidoscope. Um, and to our listeners, you can learn more and you can contact Sue at her website, again, www.sarasotaschoolofglass.com. Or visit the school at 5704 Lawton Drive in Sarasota, Florida. Thank you, Sue. Thank you so much for having me.